I'm not being followed by anything other than my memories of that moment. That moment that felt like an eternity to me was certainly only a few seconds, but they were the most haunting seconds of my life. For a bit of context, I'm a Canadian university student currently living in central Quebec, not like Montreal or anything, but in a very small town bordering a very small city in the middle of nowhere. The landscapes are a sort of emerald dream, with titanic mountains jutting out aggressively, all of which are blanketed in dense forests. I love my hometown. Everything's within walking distance. Friends, the bar, the lake, it's all great nearby, so we often hit the town together. No need to drive anywhere or anything. Last night we decided to have a little bonfire on this little ridge off of the side of the lake, which really doesn't provide too much surface area for a bonfire. For this reason, the ten of us were huddled around a dimly lit campfire instead. Guitars being played, fine alcohols being drank, and good times are being had by all. As the night draws on, I've charged myself with keeping the bulk of the fire going. Nobody else is really too apt at any sort of camping or otherwise outdoorsy activities in my group. Up until this point, all was very normal, other than my close friend acting a little... off. After our first few, he had run out and left by himself to get more. The ridge was out of sight of the road due to the dense forest path that we'd used to get to and from it, so he goes and cuts through it alone. When he gets back, he's acting like he's had a hundred beers. Looks like he wasn't used to his legs. Strangely enough, he had a full case of beer with him, so I assumed he hadn't drank any more. He also wasn't gone for very long at all. Honestly, we drink together often, me and him. I know what he's like drunk and this was particularly unusual. So he's trying to talk to people but he just can't say real words. It was as if he was trying to perform all of the accents of normal English speech but didn't really actually understand any words or syntax. Kind of like those videos that are meant to elucidate on what English might sound like to non-English speakers. As I mentioned before, the fire wasn't providing much in terms of light, so when we'd head off to grab some firewood, I'd usually jerry-rig my cell phone flashlight into my belt to keep the area in front of me well lit, as to not fall for fear of losing teeth. We do this a few times, and some of the others begin to lose a little motivation to collect wood, so I take matters into my own hands for the last run of the evening. This brush was completely uncultivated, super thick, very dark, the only discernible paths were about shoulder width and obstructed by the old fallen tree here and there. So I'm yanking at trees trying to feel for anything dry. Even my phone light was falling behind waist level foliage. I really didn't have too much lighting. Once I got a handful or so I figured it'd be good enough for a last burn so I get the idea to head back. But just as I get this thought my phone falls straight to the ground. So of course it had to land face down blocking the flash, preventing me from finding it right away. Regardless, I didn't look for it immediately. For some reason, I decided to let the darkness sink in. Never had I been in such a dark environment that I was unable to see my hand right in front of my face. Even the brightest moonbeams couldn't breach the canopy above. However, as I focused on my surroundings, I quickly realized I was referencing my frame using a subtle glow. It was yellowish, but twisted into a green color the more I concentrated. I was immediately very startled by its lack of movement, yet duly curious. I hesitantly paced inward, carelessly leaving my phone on the ground. As I approached, the glows split distinctly into two yellow-green bulbs that were locked to each other. Their eyes. My vision is really bad, especially with lighting, so from a distance my eyes will merge sources of light together. For instance, I can't see stars. This caused my curiosity to go nuts. What kind of fat raccoon is trying to stalk me through the bushes? Something was hitting me though. I was terrified. I bore a fear so intense that my stomach began to churn. My curiosity has always outweighed my fears, and this situation was no different. It watched me as I watched it. I began to know what it was. It began to know me. There was a very strange bond in that moment that chilled me to the core. I felt a connection to this living thing, but its eyes were pumping fear into my body. The worst mistake I'd ever make is to follow. Nervously, I yelled loud enough to attempt to startle whatever it may have been engaged in this chilling stare down against me at only about a seven or eight foot distance. Its absolutely motionless reaction to my yelp began to chip away at my sanity. 
Was I staring at two elaborately placed lights in the middle of the woods? No, it couldn't be. They had to be eyes, and this battle cry didn't even make the thing flinch. Because of that, part of me rationalized that it could not possibly be any animal. It's probably some kind of prank or marker for some kind of ecology job. So I pressed towards it again, walking as if I knew for sure that this could all be logically explained. As I closed the gap, my vision began to hone in on these lights, plainly defined ovals, resplendent with the brightest darkness I have ever felt. And they were legitimately just out of my range of clear vision. The lights, which were waist level before, rose up. They rose as eyes would on a bear standing on its hind legs, instantly reducing me to a quivering mess. Odd thing is, bears don't have antlers. I haven't ever heard of a moose with piercing eyes that can stand on its hind legs either. As soon as it began to straighten up, I was already getting out of there. I just ran. Luckily, I managed to kick my phone out of the dirt and hurriedly picked it up. The flashlight was still going, making it really easy to spot once I perturbed it. Rolling through the woods, illuminating phone now in hand, I made it back to my campfire completely out of breath. Now, Normally I'd spray this story all over my friends, but I knew they'd just think I went freaking nuts or hit my head collecting wood. Also, considering I didn't have a bundle of sticks anymore, my shortness of breath was probably a little unjustified. I sat down and noticed that my friend from before was still being very strange, but it seemed like with every passing minute he was adapting more to the conversation and was steadily attempting to contribute more and more. We're all good friends, which is why I find this unusual considering the fact that he legitimately could not speak English one minute, then within 15 he's practically back to normal. Still, something was off. He was the last to leave the campfire. Even after the other guys had peed it out, he just stayed and stared at the ashes. After most of us had gotten home, he calls me. An entire minute of silence. The whole time I'm shouting at him to tell me where he is and that if he's too drunk to get home, I'll go and find him. Disturbingly, he just hangs up. After a cigarette and another half of beer, he calls me back again. This time, he's trying to talk, but like before, he can't pronounce any words again. He never did touch that case of beer he brought, by the way, just sat next to it during the whole fire. So I tell him to stop being an idiot and to tell me where he is. Hangs up again, leaving me to figure he's just drunk, emotional, and that I was maybe a bit too harsh on him. Honestly though, I was just so shaken up I needed to confide in somebody about what I had just seen, but he was incapacitated and it frustrated me. After that, I went to bed because I figured he was just strangely drunk. It was insanely weird to me, but I had a few drinks too so I wasn't really having any of this crap and figured I'd try to get some sleep. When I wake up this morning, I have a text from his roommate asking me why he saw him crawl out from underneath his car and drive away this morning. We haven't seen him since, and his roommate said he thought he never made it home because he didn't come in. So, what is wrong with my friend? I'm hoping he comes back because if he doesn't, I believe that my buddy had just got his skin and car hijacked by a skinwalker or something. For a little background on my story, I live in a small town outside Kansas City, Kansas, technically a part of it because of the unified government, but the area I live in has a lot of history around it. There was a lot of Native American activity in the area. My house has a long driveway and is in the middle of a stand of woods. The woods have been there as long as there have been records of the area. When we first moved into our home, everything seemed pretty normal, but after living there for about a month, that's when abnormal stuff started happening pounding on the roof, animal scratches on our vehicles, and we started finding a lot of dead animals on the property. We even contacted Kansas State Game Wardens but couldn't find any evidence of poaching or poisoning or even the animals getting hit by cars. So after about two years of this, my brother moves back in and brings his dog with him. One night at about 11pm, the dog starts whining to be let out, so I put him on the leash and walk him around the yard. Suddenly he starts trying to yank me back towards the house. Then this uneasy feeling washes over me and I notice something that smells like rotting catfish guts mixed with dough estrus. 
I feel like someone was watching me, so I turn around. And down by our garage, just inside the light, I see this figure. It was about five feet tall, hunched over. It was very pale, almost translucent. It had small, deep-set beady eyes and a deer-like face. A sense of pure terror washed over me. I'd never been more scared of anything in my life, and to this day I've never felt that level of fear. I ran back into the house and wake up my dad and brother. They grab some shotguns and run outside to check it out. All they find are some very deep scratch marks on the garage. We contacted game wardens the next day. I described what I saw and smelled, and they said it was probably a very sick deer that has contracted mange or something of the sort. Weird stuff kept happening for another two or three years. Then we had that really bad drought, and the stuff stopped occurring. So I have no idea what it was that I saw that night. I was wondering if anyone else has seen or smelled anything similar to that. I need help. I live in a rural area of Georgia. I don't know if my religion has anything to do with this, but I am a pagan. These past two years have been a nightmare. There have been a few incidents and I don't know what to do. The first thing that happened was about a year and eight months ago. I was walking in this patch of woods, about 20 to 25 acres, listening to music. At some point I dropped my phone and knocked the earbuds out. After I bent down I said, oh crap, and a few seconds later I heard the word repeated back to me in this like forced tone. It seemed to be coming from all sides of me. The smell hit me like sulfur and smoke. It was all so strange, but I guess I just kind of brushed it off and went home. The second was a few months ago. Me and this girl had just started talking and I invited her over and we wanted to go on a walk. I'd say it was ten when we went out. There's this neighborhood being built that no one lived in at the time. We were going to break into a house that was never done being built. You know, this was a bad idea, but I wanted to impress her. I tried to kick the door in, but seconds later I heard two thuds and the doorknob shook. We just kind of looked at each other with this mutual, let's get out of here look. After that we decided to go into another one a few blocks away. Another bad idea. We got there and looked in one of the windows and this sense of overwhelming dread hit me and her. It was like the most horrifying thing I've ever felt. We didn't see it, but it was there. I have no doubt in my mind it was. When we began to walk home, she said she saw something getting closer, but said not to turn around. I don't know what she saw. Maybe she was just freaked out. We did get home safe, though. The next time I was with a close friend, I was in the car on the way to the gas station. We saw this white deer in a ditch. At first I thought it was fake, like some sort of decoy, but it was watching the car intently, like moving its head. So after we got what we needed and started heading home, we saw the deer twice more in different locations, doing the same head-twisting thing. I FaceTime her later to find out she saw it again on the way home. Around this time, my neighbor's cat was killed. She was found with her throat ripped out. The most recent thing, I have this roommate. He's a really sweet guy. He had gone out one night and my parents are never home anyway, so I was alone. I went to do a perimeter check of the house. And I just felt that dread again. I got through most of the house locking windows and doors and such. When I got to his room, it was at the window. I'm a transgender male. I don't know if the hormones or if a cisgender man would cry in this situation, but I just burst into tears. Luckily, his window was already locked. I just shut the door and walked out. What do I do? I like walking at night, but I've been scared too lately. And this is completely true. I wish I had proof, but I don't. Has anyone had anything like this happen? I've been reading into all of this. I don't want to say the name, but I think this is what I saw. Please help. I think I just saw a skinwalker or wendigo. I live in southeastern Pennsylvania, and I know some have seen skinwalkers in midwestern parts of PA, but I was in the car riding on my way to work this morning, and I always look out the window. I wasn't driving. 
There are a lot of deer in my area, and I see them frequently. There's an area that has houses, but there are a lot of wooded sections surrounding the houses. While looking out the window, I see in the woods what looks like a deer, only it looks like it's crouching down like a person does on its knees. The face also looked distorted, like it was deformed. Its horns weren't even right, if that makes sense. It was just staring, not moving. Which I've seen deer do before, but its eyes weren't on the side of its face like they were supposed to be. They were in the front. And I think that's what made this sighting so unsettling. My family has strong Native American Sioux roots. This happened in rural Minnesota, June 2009, and I was pretty young at the time. My dad and I were riding our horses down the trail behind his house, heading to the gate that separated his land from the state forest. As we neared the gate, the horses' heads lifted and their ears perked with alarm. We followed their line of sight, noticing animal movement around a clump of trees. It appeared to be a dog or coyote sniffing around, so my dad pointed it out. Hey, look at that, a coyote. We didn't think a lot of it. While coyotes are a neat sight, it's not really anything special for the area, and it is a standard behavior for coyotes to be fearful of humans, so we expected it to be on its merry way. Wildlife forgotten, my dad dismounted his horse and moved toward the gate to unlatch it so we could continue our ride. But as he was doing so, the animal headed in our direction only until it was only a few feet away behind the fence. It stopped, and we were stunned not only by its audacity, but by the size of it. It was absolutely huge and definitely not a coyote, but a unique attribute was the purple collar it sported. Still, we didn't see it as anything more than a weird occurrence and wrote it off as someone's large and friendly wolfish husky that had gotten loose and my dad got back on his horse so we could go. Once my dad got off the ground again, this thing started to move, and gosh, was it intelligent. It easily glided under the fence and went straight to me, smaller person on a smaller horse, but its eyes were on my dad, obviously trying to calculate what he was going to do. It circled my horse and began attempting to separate her from the other one, which was when we both realized something was wrong with the situation. It did not look crazed. There was no foaming at the mouth or unnatural movements. That's what was unnerving. The wolf was collected and precise in everything it did. My dad, being excellent in high-pressure situations, calmly dismounted once more and looked the wolf square in the eyes and yelled at it to go away as he menacingly lunged at it. I can assure you, his voice is more than intimidating, especially when raised, yet the wolf didn't even flinch. Next, he instructed me to steer my horse, being the more aggressive equine of the two so the wolf was between her rear end and the fence post. I do as asked and his plan works, almost. She kicked the wolf hard as we could hear its skull collide with her hoof in the fence posts. And this didn't phase it, it got back up without any visible signs of pain or injury. At this point my dad explained that we were going to turn around and try to go to the barn, figuring it wouldn't follow us to the front yard. We began walking back, him leading the horses and me riding mine, but the wolf's interest was trained on me and it didn't give up on circling my horse. About halfway to the barn, my dad saw the wolf wasn't going to flee and called 911 to get help. The emergency responder was very dismissive and my dad was fighting with her to send officers. The wolf picked up on his distraction and took this opportunity to attack my horse, snapping at her legs. I panicked. Screeching to my dad she was being attacked and he requested for help a last time before telling the responder that he had to go. We reached the front yard without any major issues but progress was slow going because my dad had to watch the wolf, the horses and me, meanwhile it remained solely intrigued in me and kept circling. Unfortunately, the plan to use the barn fell through after remembering we closed the garage like door and the only way to open it was manually from inside the barn. Not wanting to leave us alone with the wolf, my dad rerouted us to the dog kennel which was surrounded by a decently sized fence. The wolf didn't follow me or the horses and my dad closed us in while he went to the house to retrieve his rifle. The wolf nosed around the yard casually until my dad returned and after seeing his gun, the wolf ran. My dad fired but didn't manage to hit it despite being an excellent shot. Immediately, 
He tried to find paw prints to determine where the wolf had disappeared to, but didn't find anything, and this is when two police officers showed up. The officers looked downright terrified once informed of what was going on, and my dad expressed interest in looking for the wolf, to which they hesitantly agreed. They searched the property for an hour or so, but didn't find anything, and they left. My dad and I got the horses calmed, and we examined them for injuries. Mine had a deep gash on the back of her foreleg. The next day, I was walking on the same trail with my dad, who was carrying his rifle. We peered into one of the horse pastures, and there it is again, staring back at us blankly and unmoving. It didn't seem afraid in the least and did nothing but keep his eyes on us. I was young and stupid and scared, so I shouted, There it is! or something similar, which spooked it. After the events of the previous day, we were both surprised I managed to frighten it enough to take off, but perhaps it had actually been afraid of the rifle. This is the only other time we have seen it. In the aftermath, my dad asked around his community to see if anyone had a pet that matched the description and checked bulletin boards assuming that someone would be searching for it considering the collar. No luck. The horse was treated, no infection or rabies, which we found quite shocking since we figured the wolf had to have been sick to go after us. Despite the inconsistencies, my dad and I decided to settle on the wolf being extremely hungry, though it wasn't thin or just plain crazy, even if it didn't look or act the part. Needless to say, subsequent trail rides were always accompanied by my dad's pistol. If it makes anyone feel better, the emergency responder got into hot water over their conduct. It took forever to send someone because my dad sounded too calm on the phone and they needed officers present for a festival in the town at the time. My dad had a chat with the police chief leading to the call being reviewed. Turns out the wolf could be heard attacking my horse in the background. So, what was this? Is this a skinwalker? Do skinwalkers attack? I'm not usually a believer in supernatural or paranormal, and I think of this as a freak incident, but just figured I'd write it here in case anybody else has other ideas. Additionally, if there are any wolf experts, is this behavior common? I've never heard of healthy lone wolves approaching with malicious intent, especially when the target is accompanied by a full-grown adult and two horses. And I've never seen a wolf or a coyote of this size. I'm not sure what to think of what happened. I may just be overthinking things, or my sister may have just been joking with me. I figured I would share this small story here in case anyone has any insight as to what happened. However, I don't think I quite believe anything as monstrous as I suspect to be at fault. I probably just misheard. For perspective, I will tell you that I live out in the southern part of British Columbia, Canada. I live a good half hour away from the nearest town by car my home is completely surrounded by forest with a few distant neighbors. It is not uncommon for us to see and hear coyotes, wolves, bears, and cougars, so we have a large dog for protection. However, the latest dog just passed on, so our new protector is just a puppy, and she's not very brave just yet, and I don't think she could have helped the situation if she had wanted to. It happened the summer after my graduation. I got a call from one of my neighbors asking if I could tend to her garden while her and her husband went on a fishing trip. I took the walk down the hill with my dog through the brush so that she could lay out the details of specific care her plants would need. My family have known this woman since we moved into our home 20 years ago, and as children we would all go down to visit her, make her cards and chat, and she would allow us to play in her swimming pool in the summer. I trust her completely and have house sat for her before so it was no odd request for my sister and I to go out and help. The garden was new and absolutely beautiful. I have a garden of my own, but it was nothing compared to hers, which was gated in and was in pristine condition. The mosquitoes were horrid, so she made her instructions short and I retreated back up the hill to inform my little sister of our assignment. The first day was terribly hot. My sister and I attempted to get up early to evade the heat and bloodsuckers, but in the end, they were all sitting in the shade, waiting for us to arrive. It took a full hour and a half to completely soak the entire garden, and by then, we were sweating, bloody, itchy, and irritable from all our newfound bite marks. We were supposed to water the garden every morning, so that the sun wouldn't dry up the water throughout the day. 
so I got up early to wake my sister who, after yesterday's entertainment, refused to go down with me, protesting that she wanted to sleep in and to leave her alone. Not wanting to be held responsible for the demise of my neighbor's veggies, I reluctantly trotted down the path to my neighbor's. Both my dogs were off on some squirrel-infested adventure, so the trek was made alone. Only a few birds that morning until I made it down farther, and the closer I got, the quieter it became. My attention, however, was on the sun, and I wanted to finish my task ASAP. When I was almost done, I took a stretch and went to turn off the hose, wiping the sweat from my forehead. Across the field from the garden, I thought I heard a person, which would have been very odd, so I stood still to listen. What I heard was my sister calling my name in a shrill voice. My sister and I would often call each other in a strange exaggerated screeches and voices in just that particular way. I knew for a fact my sister is far too lazy to hike all the way down and sneak through the bush across a field just to yell my name. I listened again, but I heard nothing. Finishing up, I assumed I had just misheard, believing it to have been a bird or something, though the odd happening stuck in my mind. Later on, I referred the account to my sister who laughed and joked with me that it must have been this creature her friend told her about. The creature she was referring to was called a wendigo or skinwalker. I honestly don't know the difference between the two or if they are the same thing. I don't know what these creatures are or if they actually exist, but if they were to, they are supposed to live in this kind of area. I put it out of my mind anyway, not believing in such things. The next day I was with my sister tending the garden and my dog came down to see us. I was shocked to see her paw was all bloody. Thinking she had cut herself on a piece of sheet metal, I ran with her back up to the house to see if I could clean and fix it. My sister didn't want to come up with me so she stayed in the garden to finish up watering her part. It turned out the blood on my dog's paw was not her own and she had simply caught an unfortunate pack rat whom she had delightedly torn to pieces. When I came back down, my sister wasn't in the garden. Confused, I began to walk to my neighbor's house when she came outside to meet me. She told me she had heard her name being called from across the field in my voice in the same way I had heard mine. She was visibly spooked and insisted we go back up to her house and leave the garden for tomorrow. I refused and told her she could go up without me if she wanted, but I had to finish the garden. I suspected she was only kidding with me and I was waiting for her to give up her refusal right away, like she normally would. Instead, she stayed with me, holding her arms and refusing to walk up alone. Once we finished, we both came back together for the next three mornings to water the garden and no other occurrences happened. To this day, my sister claims she wasn't lying. I'm not sure if these creatures are supposed to be smart enough or talented enough to pull off stunts so specific. We had lived in the same house in the middle of the woods for our whole lives, and we can be loud and silly without fear of annoying anyone. But if someone or something had been close enough to listen, they definitely had plenty of time to do so. Also, how these occurrences only happen when we were alone gives me goosebumps. If you have any answers for me, I would appreciate any info you have. Hey guys, I want to personally thank you for the past three years on YouTube. It's been a wild ride, and I never could have gotten to where I am without the love, sharing, and support of this amazing community. Also, much of the footage used in today's video is from an ARG created to promote The Monster Project, out on iTunes and Video Demand today. Aspiring filmmakers find three cast members who claim to be real monsters, Filming in an abandoned mansion, the production soon becomes a nightmare as they reveal their true forms. A demon, a vampire, and our friend, the Skinwalker. Check out the trailer in the description and comments and go watch the movie today. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you again soon.